Discovery International Space Station, the President of the United States. Hello, Commander, can you hear us? Oh, I guess. President, welcome aboard the International Space Station, where we're joined with our uh, international uh, crew from the uh, Space Shuttle Discovery. Welcome aboard. Glad to hear your voice. We hear you loud and clear, sir. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to speak with us. We've got uh, a crew of wonderful uh, school children here who are all interested in space, and we've got uh, some members of Congress who are like big kids when it comes to talking to astronauts. Uh, I I'm told that you're cruising at about uh, 17,000 miles per hour, so uh, we're, g we're glad that uh, you are using the hands-free phone. Mr. President, uh, we go around the planet once every 90 minutes. It's uh, quite, a, quite a thrill, and it is very fast, and we see 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets every day. That, that is unbelievable. Well, the, the, the first thing we want to do is just let you know how proud we are of you. Uh, I've got to say, especially uh, once I found out that you're from Bellwood, Illinois, President, it was a beautiful place to grow up, and I have a lot of roots that are still there. Well, that's great. The, uh, we are uh, really excited about the project that you're doing. My understanding is, is that you are installing uh, some additional solar panels on the space station, uh, and that's actually going to increase uh, the number of people that can work out of the space station. Is that correct? Sir, that's correct. We've uh, roughly doubled the amount of, uh, of solar power available for experimentation and for supporting a larger crew, and we hope to go to a crew of six and a more aggressive experimental program this year. Well, this is really exciting because we're uh, investing back here on, uh, on the ground a, a whole array of solar and other renewable energy projects. And so to find out that you're doing this uh, up at the space station uh, is uh, particularly exciting. Can, can I ask how exactly do you end up uh, installing uh, these solar panels? What's involved? Somebody want to give us a rundown on how you go about doing it? Yes, sir. First, it comes up on a uh, truss segment, which is about five feet long. We use a robotic arm, arm to attach it to the end of another truss segment, and then once that's attached and bolted on to spacewalks, then we'll go ahead and unfurl or actually deploy the solar arrays in a position so that we can unfurl them from inside during the commanding through software. How about how long does it take? Spacewalk, you put it all together about six hours, but to actually do the commanding to actually deploy them out to their full length only takes about two hours. Well, obviously, we're, we're really proud of, about uh, the extraordinary work that uh, our American astronauts are doing. Uh, you know, you are representative of the dedication and uh, sense of adventure and discovery uh, that you know, we're so proud of. But one of the things that's wonderful about this is that it is an international space station, and I know that we have our uh, Japanese and, and uh, Russian uh, counterparts on board as well. Uh, we, we'd love to uh, say hello to them and uh, hope that, uh, that this is an example of the kind of spirit of cooperation that uh, – you know, we can apply not just in space, but uh, here on, on the ground as well. Yeah, it's an honor to, uh, to have a chance to talk with you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, uh, we have a Russian crew member, an American crew member, and uh, I'm from Japan, and we have 15 countries uh, working together in this wonderful project, National Space Station, as well as on the ground in space, and this really symbolized the uh, future of the uh, scientific development of the world, and I'm just uh, happy to be part of this. That's wonderful. Listen, 
Mr. President, we work together um, to everything. It's really, really important for, for us. And the uh, American, Russian, Japanese, Italian, and to everybody, people, all people, work in the space for peace. Now, I notice you're bouncing around uh, quite a bit there, guys. Uh, are, are, are you wearing uh, uh, something to strap you down, or are you about to float away? Mr. President, uh, we're just uh, holding on with our toes uh, onto some uh, handrails below us, and at any moment we could all just easily float up. And that's one of the fun things about the about flying in space. We get a chance to talk to a lot of kids and show them uh, all the adventures that we have flying around. Uh, it's also, uh, it's not just a, a lot of fun. Uh, it's a little bit uh, tough on our bodies. We have to exercise. And so we get a chance to talk to a lot of schools while we're up here, schools all over the planet to help inspire the next generation. Yeah, I hear that you're going to be talking to my uh, alma mater, Puno School, when you fly over Hawaii. All right, well, you tell them aloha. Listen, we've got a bunch of young people here. I want to see if uh, any of them uh, have some questions. Anybody have a question over here? Okay, this. hold on. We've got a young lady right here who's got a question. As an astronaut, what do you eat? Did you hear that question? They want to know what you guys are eating up there. Uh, we're, we're eating really well. Uh, we eat a lot of, uh, it's, it's prepared in NASA, but it's kind of like a backpacking food. It's uh, dehydrated, we rehydrate it and, uh, and warm it up. Uh, we also use a, have food similar to meals ready to eat that they use for the military and that uh, a few of us ate last year when the hurricane came through Houston. Do you guys still drink Tang up there? <laughs> <laughs> I've got Bill Nelson here, and uh, he says that that's uh, that, that's been taken off the menu. <laughs> uh, any uh, that, that's by, by the way before uh, the time of uh, you young people, we used to drink tang. Uh, we got a young man right here. Hold on one second. Um, can you play video games in space? Can you play video games in space? We can, in fact. And in fact, uh, a few years ago when I was up here for six months, I had a, a video game that I used to play in my spare time. Unfortunately, we don't have much spare time. So we can. We have a lot of laptop computers. But for the most part, we, we, we stay real busy doing uh, real work. Uh, so the, uh, t tell us what, what kinds of uh, experiments uh, are you doing? Once you got the panel up, uh, what kinds of uh, other activities are are you doing? Is is it mostly just maintaining uh, the craft, uh, or uh, are are there certain experiments or uh, projects that you're engaged in as well? Well, sir, we have uh, experiments already up here that we've been doing for many years, and we'll be able to double that with the addition of the solar array that our shuttle friends brought up. We do a lot of experiments on combustion, understanding materials, understanding how, you know, we're guinea pigs, so understanding how people's bodies change in space, and all this is in preparation for long-duration missions to Moon and Mars. And the exciting thing about doing science up here is we really don't know what we don't know, and that gives you the greatest potential for learning. And we've had a lot of cases where people have set up experiments, and we've conducted them here on the space station, only to find out that we've learned something new, something more uh, about the fundamentals of, this, of the uh, processes and the, the um, science. So it's a really great place to learn a lot. Outstanding. Uh, any of the young people have another question? This young man right here? Hold on one second. Have you found any life forms or any plants out in space? That's a good question. Any, uh, any life forms out there other than you guys? We did an experiment on this mission uh, to take a swab or a sample of the surface of the 
EVA, the spacewalker's gloves, both before and after the spacewalk. And that's a, that was sort of a demonstration of the type of technology that we'll be able to use on the moon and Mars uh, for the same purpose, to try and see if we can determine what sort of bacteria or microorganisms are living uh, in the various environments we're going to encounter. We, unfortunately, haven't really found anything here. I think we'll have much more uh, success at finding new types of life and different structures when we go to places like Moon and Mars and Moon to Titan and these other types of uh, environments. Excellent questions. All right. Uh, we've got a young man back here. What things did you have to study to be an astronaut? All right, that's a good question. You guys are all extraordinarily trained. What uh, if, if we've got some budding astronauts uh, over here, what uh, what should they be doing? I'm assuming they better uh, hit the books on science and math. Uh, that's, uh, you got it just right. The, uh, one of the beautiful things about uh, getting to work here is uh, you can study uh, just about anything that, uh, that you're really interested in. Uh, science and math being a big part of it, but we have uh, uh, medical doctors, uh, geologists, uh, engineers, and, uh, and uh, physicists in the group here with us. Um, so it's uh, pretty much anything in the math and science field. Uh, we've got a couple of school teachers here with us. Um, so uh, studying education as well as uh, the math and science. But there really is uh, room up here for, uh, for everybody. The uh, important part, though, is to uh, work really hard and uh, and do well in school. It uh, it'll make a difference in your future. And, and what about uh, what about fitness requirements these days? Uh, you know, some of us remember watching uh, the right stuff. Where oh, you know, that's pretty impressive. Uh, <laughs> The, the, uh, the, well, Mr. President, uh, the uh, requirements are still uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Mr. President, the, uh, the fitness requirements are still uh, still there. Matter of fact, uh, the International Space Station just recently incorporated a new uh, fitness machine. Uh, it's like it's a very very fancy uh, workout machine you see in a, in a gym, but it's called the A Red, and we can do a lot of uh, good exercise on it. Uh, leg exercise, strength uh, training for your legs as well as your upper body. So, it, uh, particularly for the long duration folks, it's uh, very important to maintain uh, uh, your muscles in good tone and uh, help you readapt when you get back on planet Earth. Excellent. Okay, there's a young lady back here who had a question. Um, when you say you exercise, what do you do? Well, we have a couple of different uh, exercise machines up here. On the space shuttle we brought up, a, it looks like a, like a bicycle that you would find in a gymnasium, so we can use that. And they have one here on the space station. And the other machine, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can uh, do squats. Uh, you can do curls. So we have a lot we can do. We also have a treadmill, so you can go ahead and run up here in space. Any, any, this, okay, we've got uh, another question from a young man. Hold on. Do you know how many stars there are in space? Asking how many stars in space. I'll be interested in hearing the answer to this one. Well, uh, aboard the International Space Station, we can look down and see our beautiful planet Earth, and we can also look up and see the rest of the cosmos. And we can see that there are so many stars out there that it's very hard to count them all. And we can see that our Earth is a very small, very small planet in such a big universe. And it's just really amazing because it gives us a, a, a deep perspective of that we have to really take good care of our own planet. And that our own planet is just a, is a small place and we have the whole rest of the universe to work together in, in an international sense and go, go explore this whole universe that's in front of us and all the discoveries that we'll make together. So maybe we'll someday be able to count how many stars that we have because we've, we're starting to go to the go to the stars as human beings together. And uh, that's what's really exciting about serving aboard the International Space Station and flying up and down on space shuttles is that we're, we're part of that great adventure. And we need you kids to study hard because uh, we, we can't do it all by ourselves. 
We really need you guys to, to work hard and uh, and do whatever you're supposed to do and do it well, uh, like Tony said, because uh, there's a whole whole universe in front of us. I had I had a quick question. The, uh, does uh, weightlessness uh, have an impact in terms of uh, your ability to to sleep? We just arrived here uh, just a few days ago, and uh, it's taken a while to get used to. Uh, for me personally, uh, missing a pillow. Uh, you're used to laying down on a mattress and having a place to rest your head, and uh, so it's it's taken uh, taken a while to get used to that. Well, the uh, I know uh, the kids got a chance to ask some questions. I want to make sure that uh, if there are any members of Congress who've got uh, some questions that they're interested in, that they've got a chance to. Okay, hold on. This is uh, K. Bailey Hutchinson from Texas. I understand that you are doing uh, experiments on salmonella and watching those organisms and how they react and grow, and we've had some salmonella problems here on Earth. Um, what do you think you will be able to learn from the, the uh, environment in space that maybe you couldn't learn here on Earth. Actually, going to have a bit of a hard time answering that question. We do indeed have a, a, an experiment called the National Laboratory Program Vaccine Experiment, in which salmonella, um, are, uh, in which certain microorganisms are exposed to salmonella. My job as an astronaut was basically to turn the crank and activate the experiment, and then after about four or five days, uh, turn the crank again and deactivate it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the scientists are going to do with the data back at home or with the samples. We are returning, however, eight big vials of samples of these uh, of these cultures cultures with microorganisms and salmonella, and let the scientists go to work. This Bill Nelson, he's he's uh, he knows a little something about this stuff. Hey guys, I wish I were up there with you. Uh, you are just getting to the point where it's really looking like a full up national laboratory where we can really do the experimentation. Uh, when will you have it uh, full up, ready to go, where we can then reap the results of that $100 billion investment? Uh, nice to hear you again, sir. Um, the International Space Station has already been delivering uh, some of the science we promised. What, uh, where we are now is uh, an Expedition 18, our crew, is uh, we're making the turn from three people to six people. The next crew that comes after us, uh, a few months after uh, after we get replaced, we'll have uh, we'll have six people on board the International Space Station. So that's why we needed the solar power. That's why we needed the second toilet and other things so that we have a room and, and uh, facilities for six people. And uh, once we have six people, we'll have enough uh, time and energy, uh, solar power, I mean, to uh, to run all the experiments uh, that we can. And then it's just a matter of uh, getting enough uh, experiments up and down from the space station uh, to really reap on, on that science. Uh, we've uh, already been delivering, and uh, we've got a lot more to come. And like Sandy said, there's a lot of things we don't know, so there's some really interesting discoveries out in front of us. Do any of the young people have any more questions? Hold on one second. We've got one here. Do you love doing your job? They asked if you love doing your job. Yes, it's, uh, it's wonderful to, to work in space. Uh, ever since I saw Apollo 11, the lunar landing, when I was five years old, I always longed for uh, going to space and work, and uh, here a dream came true. I uh, had to study hard and work hard, but I'm so uh, happy to be here, and I'm love, loving uh, living here and working with so many uh, wonderful people here. Uh, the, uh, how, 
Just a couple of logistical questions. How long did it take from the time of launch? How long did it get? Uh, does it take to get to the space station? Uh, well, Mr. President, uh, let me answer that in two uh, uh, two ways. First of all, it takes us about eight and a half minutes to get to orbit, and at that time we're we're going 17,500 miles an hour. But we're in a bit of a tail chase with the space station, and it's approximately about a day and a half to two days later that we actually rejoin with the space station. Okay, so eight minutes just to get in orbit, but then you've got to basically try to to catch up with the space station. Uh, and match up so that you can uh, you can lock in. Oh, that's exactly right. Okay. Anybody have any more questions? Hold on one second. What's your favorite or the most interesting experiment you're working on up at the space station? Okay. Do you guys have a favorite experiment right now? That's a really tough question because they're all interesting in different ways. Uh, Mike and I were doing a flame experiment where we were trying to, to help the scientists on the ground understand how fire behaves up here. And there's all kinds of reasons for that. So that was interesting because it's sort of an unusual environment to intentionally put a fire. Um, I think one of the ones I like the most is an experiment that we're doing on ourselves to try and understand how our nutritional state changes and our biochemistry changes. And that'll help us design food and understand a little bit more about the process that the human body undergoes. That's probably my favorite one. But there's all kinds of interesting things in all of the experiments. Now, can I ask you a question? Uh, the, the, were you tempted to uh, cut your hair shorter while you were up there, uh, or do you? Uh, is it fun and weightless? Well, that's a really good question because it is a little bit of an overhead to take care of long hair here. Um, I think you know, ideally, a, a short haircut's the way to go. But quite frankly, on me, it wouldn't be so nice, so I kept it long. I, I think it's a real fashion statement. <laughs> Hold on one second. We've got uh, we've got another young man back here. How much spare time do you have on the day in the day? How much how much spare time do you have? It, it sounds like you guys are are, are pretty busy. They do keep us pretty busy up here, and uh, we have a very tight schedule that starts from the moment you wake up until the moment you go to sleep. Uh, but they give us a little bit of time in the morning to uh, to get yourself ready, get yourself cleaned up, have some breakfast, and the same in the evening. So we can use that time to either call down to our family and friends or maybe even check our email and see how things are going back on Earth. Now, that, that's interesting. Does, uh, does email uh, work pretty much the same between the space station uh, and uh, computers here on Earth? Mr. President, uh, as, uh, as uh, just about everybody uh, on the planet knows, is that uh, email is a pretty important way for us to keep in touch with each other. Uh, even though we're really far away and traveling really fast, uh, we still use email also. Unfortunately, we only synchronize our emails uh, once or twice a day, sometimes three times a day. So it's not as fast and instantaneous as we are used to on the ground. But even so, it's a really useful way to, to get in touch with uh, other people. In addition, we have uh, uh, kind of an internet over uh, voice over internet protocol telephone, so it's really nice that we can get a chance to talk to our families, uh, not 24-7, but uh, when we do have good satellite coverage, we do get the chance to call home. And that, uh, for those of us who stay up for a long time, that's uh, what's really, really important to us. Excellent. All right. Well, I know that uh, you guys probably have a whole bunch of stuff to do, uh, but I, I think that uh, we may have uh, one more question from uh, a member of Congress. Hold on one second. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Suzanne Cosmas, and I actually represent Central Florida, the area that includes the uh, Kennedy Space Center. So I want to first thank you on behalf of all Americans for your service to us and uh, for wh what you represent in terms of America and our supremacy in space exploration. 
um, it, along with our international partners and for what you're doing there at the International Space Station. I had the honor of being at the uh, Kennedy Space Center last week when you took off, and it was a fabulous, ab absolutely fantastic launch. And um, we, uh, so I wished you adieu from there, and now I'm wishing you hello from here. Um, I want to thank you again for your service and tell you how excited I am to be representing the Kennedy Space Station in that area, but also for what you do that inspires people to be interested in the science and technology that has led us to this uh, pioneering place where you are. Um, the things that we anticipate that we will be able to reap from uh, your service, um, I'm very thrilled about, particularly uh, the idea, as the President has said, of alternative energies and the fact that you're using solar panels what we're hoping in the long run that you will be able to, from space, use solar energy to come back to Earth. And um, again, I'm thrilled to be here and very excited to have the opportunity to, to talk to you. And um, thank you so much for your service to our country. Well, I think that... Uh, well, thanks, ma'am. We, uh, we appreciate that. And uh, each one of us here is very lucky and honored to be right where we're at uh, here today. So the honor is all ours. We're honored to be here doing this, this, this great work. Well, I think all of us echo the sentiment. Uh, we are extraordinarily proud of you. We're so grateful that you took the time to, to speak to all of us. I know these young people uh, are, are pretty excited to be on a direct link with uh, astronauts in space. So uh, does everybody want to say goodbye? Goodbye. All right. They, they all, they're all beaming. And, and we appreciate you guys. So uh, look forward to seeing you when you're back on the ground. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. President. On uh, behalf of the uh, Space Shuttle Discovery crew here in the dark blue shirts, I uh, want to say we're very honored that you spent uh, some time with us today. Uh, it meant a lot to us. We thank you very much. And from, uh, from one Chicago guy to another, I wish you well, sir. And uh, for the closing comments, I'll pass the microphone off to uh, Commander Mike Fink, the commander of the International Space Station. Thank you. And Mr. President, I'm not from Chicago. I'm sorry about that. But uh, my crew and I were, uh, are really happy to have a chance to talk to you and uh, share our adventure uh, with even more people. It's uh, pretty impressive what human beings can do when we work together constructively and not destructively. And that's the mission of the International Space Station. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for flying with us at 17,500 miles an hour today. And we sure were glad to have a chance to share it with you and uh, the, the distinguished members from, from Congress as well as all the kids out there. So, everybody, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. And Discovery IFS, this is Houston. That concludes the event. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Discovery IFS, we are now resuming operational space-to-ground communications.